my chickadees welcome back today we're gonna be checking out the kid at the back uh, I do believe this is just a demo right now but there's been like a lot of good chatter around this is from what I've heard so I am very excited to jump in and I don't know anything <laughs> pretty much which is how I like it so first off look at this shady boy is he like the kid at the back of the classroom he's just like shrouded in black are, are you plotting our murder boy um i have some questions but i'm very intrigued by your red eyes there all right we are going to jump oh look it's a key it's a key oh that's so cool is this the key to your heart is this the key to your heart hmm, hmm? it might be <laughs> all right Let's see. Let's start. <laughs> Enable, not safe for work. <laughs> okay, um Also, uh there was a bonus for this game. Like the the demo is free to play, of course, but there is going to be a not safe for work version coming out alongside of it. And you can get that if you pay fi uh, five or more dollars um, on the page, like donating it. So I suggest if you guys want that, you need to pop over there and check it out. Because, <laughs> yes. Let's dive on in and check this out. It was many and many a year ago in the kingdom by the sea that a maiden lived there whom you may know. By the name of Annabelle Lee. Day one. The beloved. Okay, so it does go like days. I like that. In class dismissed. By our next meeting, I need a full report of the chosen poem everyone searched. Got it? The classroom was then filled with a series of low yes ma'ams and a few hums. Satisfied, your literature teacher picks up her things and went out. Oh, it's a girl. Sorry! <laughs> she, she's got a very deep voice for a woman. Okay, it's perfectly fine. Once she was out, the students went on a series of chitter and chatter. Others stood up, dragging their chairs. They prepared to head out for lunch break. A slight yawn escaped your lips. Your eyes gazed outside through the classroom's window. The sky is starting to dim. The sun's rays blocked by the dark clouds looming. You curse under your breath. It's gonna rain. Just my luck. I didn't bother to bring an umbrella, too. You sigh in irritation as you stood up from your seat. Suddenly, a tap on your shoulder interrupted your line of thought. You turned your head towards your person, asking for your attention. Your eyes meet with cobalt blue ones. They stare straight into your own orbs. A brow raised as if in slight irritation. She is clearly impatient. Impatient for what? Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, wow. She has a nice design. Oh, the music's pretty good, too. I have it turned down a bit, so I don't know you guys can hear it, but I'll turn it up a little. Did you hear me? Do you want to come with us for lunch? I mean, I know you don't really eat lunch and spend most of your time somewhere else, but you sure you're not going to eat? I mean, look at you. Your eyes twitch from her words. You have no idea if that was out of concern for your well-being or if she's trying to bring you down. Either way, it stung you. You wrap your arms around yourself, your insecurity rising up to your throat, trying to suffocate you. Brittany! Just then, a new and familiar voice broke your inner turmoil. Oh, that's right. Oh, hello. That's really insensitive of you. Imagine if someone else told you how you look. Crow uh, Ichabod, the class re representative and one of your close friends. Heck, probably the only one of your friends that you really admire. And maybe have a tiny crush on. Brittany only huffed and looked away from Crow's pitiful gaze as he turns his attention. Spiteful gaze as he turned his attention to you. Oh, uh, our 
our buddy coming to our rescue. He's cute. I love how his hair is. That's really nice. Crow gives you a small smile while handing out something to you. You look down to see it. It was your ID. You dropped this, by the way. You grab your ID and look down to see. Your name is... Sparrow! Oh! <laughs> it's a front last name. Okay, so I guess our last name is Fail today. The ID card shows my name, Sparrow Fail, along with my pronouns. You look at the ID one more time and double check if it's correct. Name, Sparrow Fail, pronouns, he, him. Yep. You took your ID back from Crow and gave him a small thank you. He gave you a close smile, muttering a no problem as he went back to Brittany's side where the rest of his friends were. So, are you coming with us or not? Brittany said, clearly getting impatient by the second, her hand on her hip while waiting for your response. Then you decide to... Yay, our first choice in game. Ooh! This is really cool! Look at that! Okay. Um, go with them, go to the library. <laughs> yeah, I, d I don't want to deal with her. <laughs> um... Personally, I would probably go to the library. Rooftop would be pretty cool, but I mean, is it windy today? I don't want our food blowing all over the place. Um, I think that's where all the loners went. Maybe the guy in the back of the room is a loner and we could find him up there. A tick of irritation formed on your forehead before huffing out the anger. Actually, I was feeling somewhere else today. So no thanks. You and your group can go ahead. Brittany raised an eyebrow before shrugging her shoulders. Suit yourself in. She snapped her fingers before turning around and heading out with the rest of her friends. In all honesty, you have no idea where to go despite the school being very not notorious and had so many facilities. You were thankful you got accepted here in the first place through your scholarship. But making friends in this forsaken school is on a whole new level. You sighed and looked out through the classroom's windows at the darkening sky. Maybe the smell and sound of the incoming rain might help ease the burning feelings within you. With a goal in mind, you went to the rooftop. The rooftop is off limits, but they don't often bother to even lock it up, much less barricade it. Once you got in, you took a seat on the pavement under a small shade as droplets of rain slowly descend down from the sky. Just then, you heard footsteps to your right. A few muttered words were heard. Curiosity nagged you. You went to the corner where the sound came from, and there stood what seemed to be a student with bluish-green hair. Oh, no, well, <laughs> I don't think I found the guy <laughs> on the title page, but I found a cutie. <laughs> Look at him, he is cute. They were in a call, their footstep, their cycles, their steps in a cycle going back and forth as he talks to whoever he is talking to behind his flip phone. His other hand grips his hair, clearly irritated to whoever he's talking to. He flipped his flip phone closed and let out a sigh. Suddenly his body froze. The drastic change in his demeanor sends chills down your spine. I can see you, you know. Show yourself. Oh, oh, this is hard to see here. Oh, oh no. Oh no. That's story. I don't know where save is. Oh god, I can't see. Is it that one? Oh my god, I don't know how I got that right. <laughs> yeah, well sure, let's come out. You slowly inch forward, showing yourself to the strange student. The more you look at his face, the more he seems familiar and judging from his facial expression. He was thinking the same thing. How much did you hear? I only heard you curse and nothing else. 
Hugh answered dawdlessly. He raised a brow, trying to look at your face. See if you're telling the truth. He sighed and shook his head. Either way, it's rude to eavesdrop on someone's conversation. I told you, I just got here. You, bur you bury your eyebrows. He just chuckles, acting as if it's just silly teasing. You seem familiar. Let me remember. He closed his eyes, his hands on his chin, doing a thinking motion like those cartoon detectives in TV shows. Sparrow fell from the art class, correct? Why do we have the option to lie? <laughs> like, where is it? Where is it? I know it's here. Haha. -ha. Um. Should we lie or agree? Well, might as well be nice. The student smiled in glee. That's great. That means you'll be willing to help me with something. Oh no, what did we get roped into? Wait, what? I'm Hu uh, Hugo, by the way. You see, I won't be able to make it to the next class, and I kind of promised my partner for the class I, that I'd be there. Uh, Hyogo chuckled, a sweat drop forming on his cheek. He gave him a look. Seriously? But I'll make it up to you, I promise. I'm quite close to the student council and happen to know a few connections. I might be able to refer you if you like. He says with a wink and a nudge, waiting for you to take the offer. It does seem like a good offer, and help lessen your expenses and have a higher discount on your scholarship. And judging by his looks, he doesn't seem like, like you have a choice. With a sigh, you accept his offer. Hyogo gave you a pat on the back, uh, as if you guys have been long old friends, before escorting you out of the rooftop with him in tow. The school bell rings, indicating the start of the next class. So, we're going to be filling in for him? Is that what it is? You just barely made it to your next class. Your professor already on his desk and was slowly bringing out their tools for the lesson of the day. You looked across the room, paint brushes uh, by the shelves, the week's featured artwork with a few blank canvases hidden in the shelf. You sighed as you tried to look around whoever this soul person, the guy from the rooftop, was talking about until it hit you. You don't even know who this soul guy looks like! You groaned and took your seat by the window. Maybe you'll find out once your professor starts his class. I'll be assigning each, each one with a partner to work with for the upcoming weeks. You and your partner will be doing three different artworks that, that need to be submitted by the deadline. Hope you all got a partner already by this time. Now, I want you to go to your designated partners before I start explaining your task. Shit. <laughs> you mumble under your breath. This is what you get for not attending his class last time. You don't have a partner. Luckily, you're not the only one. You look around, trying to spot someone who doesn't have a partner yet, since the guy from the rooftop clearly said they were supposed to be partners. Just your lucky day, you guess. You are forced out of your seat, since your seatmate's partner will be occupying it for this class. Unlike the rest of the class, scurrying around to meet your partner, there was one who wasn't moving from his seat. You went to where he was situated, at, seeming to be reading a book. He let out a small cough to catch his attention. He closed the book and looked up at you. Oh, there he is! There he is! Dude, did you get in a fight? Goodness, he looks cool. I like, I like his outfit, his color scheme. Seems like you're a bit lost there. <clears throat> oh, I need to find a better voice for him. Do you have a partner? No. Well, just your luck then. Me neither. So... Do you want to be partners? Sure. Why not? You took the vacant seat right next beside him. His book now tucked away and on his desk is now a pen and a piece of paper, seemingly ready to take notes. Hey, I never got to know your name. That's not quite important. 
Well, I should at least know what to call you instead of green streaked hair guy. <laughs> he, he raised a brow at your silly nickname you gave him before slightly shaking his head. Sullivan Brugmondia. But just call me Sol. Sol. Soul means sun or brightness, right? Your name contradicts with your whole glam, not gonna lie. Oh no. Oh. Oh. He probably won't like it if we click the second one. Soul looked away, scratching his cheek. Yes, so. Not really the jolly type. Hugo's more of that. Well, I'm Sparrow Fail. Nice to finally know your name, Sol. Sol nodded with a small smile before returning his attention back to the professor. Oh, he made him smile, though! For this term, I want you and your partner to pass three art pieces. First one would be a portrait of your partner, strictly on paper, with charcoal as a medium. You groaned. Boomer art teachers. <laughs> Your professor then proceeds to give the other two tasks before leaving you and the rest of the class to do your task for the day. Everyone start talking with their partners, take, uh, some taking out their needed materials as the other one poses. You turn to Sol as he takes out his own charcoal pencil and his sketch pad for the class. I gotta tell you right now, Sol, I'm... <laughs> Be like, I'm pretty great at art. Not that good at art. I'm, um, still quite a beginner. You got nothing to worry about. My usual partner isn't that much of an artist either. Your usual partner? Oh, yeah. I already had an assigned partner for this class. But he last minute ditched me for some important family business. He never tells me, though. I'm not, I'm not the type to pry, either. Does your friend go by the name Hyogo, perhaps? Yeah, how do you know? I met him during lunch. He was on the rooftop. Typical of him. Sorry, you got dragged into his mess, taking his place. You shook your head, telling him you don't mind one bit. Then he keeps talking, as if he's scolding the green-haired laid back in the rooftop like a little brother. It was actually cute. You slowly took out your sketch pad and start drawing Sol's different expression as he talks. Would you believe me? Oh, this is Sol. Would you believe me if I tell you that guy is one of the top students in the entire class, yet is always missing in action? Really now? He doesn't seem to be that type of guy. Which part? Being a top student or always missing in action? Sol's brow raised, and you shrugged as you kept on sketching his face. Sol, however, caught up to what you were doing and stood up from his seat and tried to pry your sketch pad out of your hands. No, we're drawing! No, don't take our sketch pad! We're working! Were you drawing me this entire time? Maybe. No! <laughs> Liar. I thought I was supposed to be the one drawing you, not the other way around. He sat back on his seat and crossed his arms, his eyes narrowed while he bit his lower lip. Oh, come on. It's not that big of a deal, Sol. Plus, you look really cute. Oh! <laughs> Instant blush. Sol's cheeks turned red and eyes popped wide open from your comment and looked away. The grip on his arm tightened as he wrinkled his long sleeves. Oh, oh no, oh no, I can't go back. I don't know what he said. You said something? You said something? Nothing. You tilted your head to the side. You sure mumble a lot. It's a... Oh, that was us. You sure mumble a lot. It's a habit. I'm not used to talking a lot. Keep talking about your friend Hugo. You seem so fond of him regardless. Sol just sighed and rubbed his nape, his expression relaxing a bit. I owe, mo I owe him a lot, that's all. Enough about Hyogo, though. Let's continue with our task. Oh, 
all right, all right. <laughs> I think it said I'll keep drawing and Soul un overlapped us and said I'm drawing and that's final. You pouted. All right, grumpy. As you drew, you couldn't help but stare at his face. And the bandage on his cheek. Oh, as he drew, probably, because he's drawing us. And the bandage on his cheek. And judging by how much it's covering half his face, it's quite a large bruise. You fell down the stairs or something? What makes you say that? He asked. You pointed at his wound on his cheek with your pencil. Well, you can say that. Nothing for you to worry about, though. You weren't sure if you wanted to pry more into the conversation. Must let much less want to know what exactly happened because from the way he talks he doesn't seem like he fell did you get in a fight are you being beat up baby who who did it we're gonna go take care of him we might not be able to fight well but i have a pencil and i know how to stab people with it but that's a story for another day Okay, my cat walked in front of the screen. I was waiting for him to move. <laughs> Hope he gets better soon. Thanks. Soul managed to sketch up your portrait, but was caught up with the bell eventually, not being able to finish on time. He tried to pry off your sketch pad from your hands again, however, trying to get rid of the doodles you made of him during his little rant about his friend. But you chuck chucked your sketch, sketch pad in your bag before he could get his hands on it. Sol eventually gave up and started packing as well. You and him went to the exit door of the classroom and continued on into the hallway. Do you have a phone? We could exchange numbers and update each other so we can do the next task. Sol then takes out his own phone and asks for your number. You recite it out as he inputted it into his phone. Let me try and send you a message. You nodded and looked at your phone screen and see a new notification from an unknown number. This must be souls. Oh, look at his little chibi icon. That's adorable. Sup. You type some differently from how you look. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. You chuckled and rolled his eyes. You're a good guy, soul. How about we hang out again tomorrow? By your request, soul's eyes widen in disbelief. He lets out a breath that was somehow holding before sighing. Uh, of course. I'll see you tomorrow then. You nodded and walked off, giving him a goodbye wave, him returning with his own small wave. As you walked through the hallway, your eyes caught on something on the nearby bulletin board. A poster was plastered on the large board. The Hallows Ball. Come enjoy the festival spirit. Come enjoy the festive spirit of Hallow's Eve. A Halloween party, huh? By the time you arrived at your small apartment, it was already past 5 p.m. You stretch out your arms and let out a small groan. You locked your doors and decided to order takeout for dinner. You went to the living room and plopped down on the couch and took out your phone. Scrolling through until a ping notified you of a new message. Daryl! Is that another one of our friends? Anyone want to go to the Halloween party this Friday? It's going to be awesome. Oh, Brittany. Aren't we a bit too old for costume parties? Is that required? Okay, Geo. You two are no fun at all. I won't go if it's not a school requirement. Much less waste the... Much less a waste of my time. Is it? Oh, there's Crow. No, it isn't. But it'd be a, f a great and fun experience for all of us. I mean, we should loosen you, uh, up a bit, you know? Jess? How many people are in our group? I agree with Crow. Count me in. Pass. I got more important things to do than that party. Now, will you excuse me? I'll be doing my task over... My leftover task for the tight. Geo has gone offline. She's thick in the mud as usual. How about you, Sparrow? Me? 
you joining in? It'll be fun. You were honestly surprised I somehow remembered you. Checking your calendar through your phone, you didn't seem to have any plans in the near future. Or plans at all. You'd like to just spend your time in your apartment alone. I mean, sure. That's great to hear. Oh, we didn't have a choice. <laughs> Crow seemed happy about it. You giggled. This also reminds you of something. Or rather, someone. Opening another chat, you typed in Thole's newly added contact and sent him a message by sending the image of the same poster Daryl sent. A Halloween party? Hosted by the school? Yeah! I'm not quite into parties. Oh. Oh, well, that's alright. I was just asking, that's all. Thole is typing. Wait. If you're coming, then I'm coming as well. Really? Really. Do you plan on dressing up? I don't know. Do you? I mean, it's a costume party, so why not? I'll try to think of something then. You swear you can feel the smile behind those words. With a quick word of goodbye, you set your phone down and then you hear your doorbell. That must be the food delivery. Afterwards, you ate your dinner and prepared yourself for bed. You thought of today and the events that occurred. Meeting Thol, of course. He's a really nice guy. It's a wonder how I never met him despite sharing a single class with him. Oh well. You entered your bedroom, letting out a big yawn as you stretch your body. You turned to your laundry, slowly piling up and scratched your head. <sighs> Probably do laundry tomorrow. But for now... You plopped yourself on the small cushion, the soft cushions of your bed, getting into a comfortable position and slowly dozing off as you close your eyes, embracing sleep as the night goes. Okay, um, that, that was a spicy scene. Um, you guys, uh, <laughs> I'm not sharing it here. Um, it was nice. Uh, let's just say soul was thinking about us. He's thinking about us quite deeply, okay? So, um, I think he kind of sees us as his soulmate now, so it's gonna be entertaining to see more. Oh my god, I love this. Thank you for playing the, the demo, uh, day one. If you'd like to support me on my journey, give me a follow in my Twitter X account, at fan, uh, Fantaza underline underscore kit. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. Okay. Uh, I like that. I like that. I really like that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh the next days as they progress. I know they're working on the next day right now, from what I gather, but. <laughs> It got my attention. It got my attention. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um. Well, you know what? Uh, we could just dive in and really quick and see what happens if we go the other routes, okay? I was ready to end, which I do... Uh, I am going to say I am going to follow this game. And as it updates, I am going to play more of it. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy it but we can pop around and see what the other options would have done like what would have happened here if we kept hiding you kept hiding refraining from leaving your hiding spot who knows what this guy is capable of plus it's kind of suspicious why he's here at the school's rooftop out of all the places to be usually people go up to the roof if they don't want something exposed Sudan just got sighed and scratched his head I'm not going to hurt you, you know, he said as he turned around. Your eyes widen when his gaze meets yours despite being hidden. What the fuck? Seeing in no use of hiding any longer, you went out of your spot with an alert stance. He just chuckled. Okay, and then it goes straight into, uh, he, he's talking about us. Okay, we're going to lie. No, I think you got the wrong sparrow. You lied. The person before you just blinked at you. Twice, in disbelief. Scratching his cheek in confusion. For real? I could have sworn you're the same person. His voice lowed before wavering away. 
Either way, I'm Hugo, and I need your help with something. Okay, so it doesn't look like it'll affect us at all by saying something different. Okay. Let's say soul means sun or brightness. Soul nodded. I guess you can say that. I like it. It's a unique name. Thanks. Well, I'm Sparrow. Sparrow fell. Nice to meet. Uh, finally know your name, Soul. Soul nodded with a small smile before turning attention back to the professors. Oh, we only got him to blush with the other route. That's cool. Okay. I'm pretty great at art. If you would give me the honors to draw you. Go ahead. At least I could count on you. Was your friend any good at art as well? Friend? Okay. Let's see. Talking about Hugo. Okay, so that that's the same thing. Okay, let's see. Settings. Load. Uh, the other, other one we want to check out was what would happen here. What about if we go to the library? Would we still meet him in the library? The hallway was rowdy and filled with a mix of sweaty and tired young adults. Some on their way to the next class while the rest went to the cafeteria's direction. And of course, there was someone who was going the same direction as you were. The library door is beyond your reach. A smile etched on your face already missing the smell of books. You opened the doors and you were hit in the by the smell of coffee and books. You went to your usual spot in the library, the one by the large window near the cafe section. The fancy thing about your university is that their library is a library cafe. Students can get coffee as early in, in the morning up until the afternoon. It's a huge hit among the students. You can't seem to... Ah! No! No, 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 I hit the wrong button. You can't seem to blame them. Coffee fuels every college student's soul, especially uh, getting work done. Okay, a coffee place in a library oh my god i don't think i'd leave i mean i don't drink coffee but they make other things besides just coffee i wouldn't leave i would just live there <laughs> as you made your way towards the usual spot however you halted when a person suddenly took a seat on the spot you groaned just great what should i do about this Ooh. someone took our seat Ask them to move away from your seat. Find where somewhere else to sit. Just take the seat next to him. At the cost of the comfort of your favorite spot, you don't want to deal with him, nor want to engage in conversation. Ah, it's Soul! I didn't know if it was going to be Soul or Hugo. You walk towards where he is, him not minding your presence, and took the seat next to him. He paid you no mind as you placed your things down and took out your laptop, preparing to write down... A head start of your report. It was quiet, and your attention was just solely focused on the work before you, while the guy beside you continued on with his book. The sound of him flipping through was oddly comforting. The time passed, and next thing you know, you, there were only a few students left in the library. The guy beside you closed his book, chucked it in his bag, and left the library. Okay, we just had a nice little chill mutual doing our, our thing. You know, that went pretty well. We didn't mind it. We were beside him and he didn't mind we were uh, we were beside uh, we were next to each other. You turned to look up at the library's large clock. A few minutes before your next class. You stopped writing down. down turned off your laptop and placed all your things in your bag before heading out of the library as you quickly rushed to make it to your next class. Okay, and then we go back to the art room. Okay, does that make anything different? You panicked as you looked around, trying to spot some loner or an unfortunate soul like you who wasn't able to attend last time. 
from the looks of it, it seems like everyone has already partnered up. Just great. Aww. Okay, so then we... F okay, and then it looks like it's back into normal. Oh, this is different. Look, it was like somebody has to start somewhere. Oh my god, my leg's falling asleep. Hang on. Okay. Okay, um... It was like, somebody's gotta start somewhere, and then it's like, with that, Soul takes out his own sketchbook and pencil, setting upright and facing you. You straightened up your back, sitting properly as if you're about to take an ID pr uh, photo. Is this okay? Just relax your shoulders, you'll be fine. Just be natural. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, look at him. Dang, he's fine. Damn. Be pretty. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've been taken in. Your breathing stopped. Soul leaned in, his face a few inches near your face, almost feeling his minty breath. He raised his hand and brushed a strand of your hair away from your face and t tucked it behind your ear. There. That was in the way. You were sure you were bright as a cherry by now. You didn't say anything else as Sol began his sketch. His eyes hopping from that paper to your face and you swear every time you meet his gaze your heartbeat quickens. Be still my beating heart! And you dealt with that for the rest of the class. Before you knew it, the class ended. Everyone was packing their things. Sol sadly isn't done with your portrait, which you were dying to see, but he said he's going to keep it a secret until he finishes it. You better not make me look funny. What makes you think of that? Why, you... I'm kidding. H his hand then tries to reach out to your face as if wanting to cup your cheek. But he stopped midway. Oh, he's being forward in this route. Ooh. You're so pretty. Aha! We caught him this time. Did you say something, Soul? Nothing. Do you? Ha okay. And then. Okay, that's cool. All right, we're going to see what else is. Um, go to the library. Find somewhere else to sit. You don't want to deal with strangers or anyone else at this very moment. Even if you want to be at your spot at the very moment. You found a different seat. Sadly, the available ones you were able to see is the one next to the loud gossip of the students. You swear, out of all the places to be, they had to be in the library. You decided to grab a book to avert your attention to something else. You don't feel like doing your research paper. You went to the fiction section. Tall book steps come. Bookshelves come into your view. Your fingers brush along the spines of the books. Some old, some new. Thud. The thud caused the shelf to wobble a bit, nearly knocking a few books down. You click your tongue and try to peek through the bookshelves to see what's causing it. Red-haired bully? Who? Well, look what we have here. Raven-haired bully. It's creep. Uh, it's creep. M McGee. What's wrong? Cat cut your tongue? Great. Another bullying situation. You sigh. Sometimes people never grew out of their high school phase. The poor guy didn't say anything as they were pinned on uh, to the bookshelf, explaining a few shakes. Just then, he muttered something under his breath. What did you say? Speak up, freak. Oh no! They're bullying Soul. No! I said, fuck off. Tits. Why, you little. Oh, did he punch him? You winced, the red hair head lying, uh, landing a blow on the boy before your eyes caught something glistening from the raven hair bully's pocket. A pocket knife. Dudes! Come on! How the fuck did he get in there with that? 
Let's see if you'll continue being a smart ass once I cut your mouth. Uh, well, this is this up, uh, escalated a bit. Okay, um, quickly leave the scene. Uh, I want to know what happens in both cases. So we're going to leave first, because I have a feeling that's going to be the shorter one, and then we'll come back and stop them. Mm, but I want to stop him first. You didn't want to be involved with this any longer. Who know knows, you might be the next victim if you stay. Fuck the book, you can come back and read some other time. You turned and quickly left. The smell of iron invaded your nose. You shook your head and sped walk to your table. Fuck you little shit, you'll pay for that. Librarian, what's all that noise? Just in time. From the corner of your eye, you spot the librarian going to where the bullies were, and a gasp was heard from her lips. Two of you! To the principal's office! And as for you, Mr. Brungmanzia, you stay put as I call for the nurse. You can't help but tune in. More like the library's voice was a bit too loud that it reached your ears as you packed up your stuff, preparing to leave the library. Oh! Oh, is this how we got the bandage on his cheek? You turned your head, and at that moment you wished you didn't. Oh, it's a bruise. Okay, I thought he was bleeding. There stood a tall boy in black, his eyes red and dull with a dark eye bath under it. His face is swollen, a purple bruise on his left cheek. But what makes your heart stop along with your breathing is the blood on his left hand. A large gash on it. You were too busy staring at his wounds that you, you didn't see him look your way. His gaze starts to burn. You looked away, shoving the remaining notes in your bag, zipping it closed and sprinting out. Fuck the library. I'll just wait back in the classroom for my next class. Oh my god. So he literally got those wounds. Just like minutes before this class. Okay, how's our reaction when he comes in? You averted your ga eyes from his gaze, sweat accumulating on your temple. Shit, it's a guy from the library. I didn't know he was in the same art class as me. Without as much sp as sparing him a glance, you quickly took your seat by the window and tried to focus on your professor. I'll be assigning each. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, it looks like it's the same so far. Okay, it looks like this is the same. Oh, it said, can I ask for a favor? And we said, yeah, he said, just don't include my bruise. He slightly averted away, refusing to meet your gaze as if embarrassed. He seemed to be quite cautious of his appearance. Of course. Anything to make you feel comfortable. Thank you. Plus, I might actually take a while to even finish. Take your time. I can't help but look at the bandage on his face. The purple bruise not fully covering the entire wound. Your eyes then trail to the, his wrapped hand, the blood seeping out of it. My stomach doesn't feel good. Actually, you don't feel good at all. And so notice your change in demeanor. And the fact that you hadn't moved an inch on your sketch pad told him something's wrong. Hey, are you okay? I... If you're worried about my face, I don't mind it. It's nothing to be worried about. But... So remain quiet, not sure on what to do. The best thing he did was pulling his sleeve, trying to, his best to hide his bandaged hand. There. All better? Oh, it even moved on here. Oh, Yeah, we're feeling a bit guilty because uh, we ran away when this happened. So we know how you got this. And we left instead of staying to help. <laughs> we will help you in the next time. Okay. Sparrow? Oh, he came closer. Oh. 
You felt fingers under your chin. Next thing you know, you're, fa you're face to face with Thal. His eyes filled with sorry and his bro brow was furrowed in worry. At the sudden intimacy, your heartbeat quickened and you pulled away. Sorry. It's alright. You didn't mean to stare. No, I mean, for leaving you there when you actually needed help. Thal raised the brow as he backed away. You were there? Back in the library. I should have helped you if I knew you were going to get badly injured. Such a coward. You gripped the pencil, guilt filling in through your bones on what you could have easily avoided and maybe helped out. Hey. It's alright. There was nothing else you could do during that time. Who would bother to help me anyway? Say, why don't you make it up to me by finishing that portrait? Soul tells you with a small smile, trying his best to change the subject and to cheer you up. You said nothing, however, but started slow with the sketch, the guilt still eating you from the inside. The bell rang. Sadly, you weren't done with his portrait yet. Quite not sure of how it turned out. Can I see it? Uh, I'm not done yet, though. Is that so? Well, I haven't even got started with yours. Can you wait until I finish it? I promise I won't take long. Take as much time as you need, Sparrow. You and Sol then pack up. You hurriedly shove everything in your bag, wanting to leave the room as soon as possible. You rush out, catching Sol by surprise. He quickly fixed his things as well and tried to catch up to you in the hallway. You went out as quickly as you could, but Sol was hot in your trail. He eventually caught up to you and grabbed your wrist with his good hand, stopping you in your tracks, eyes still refusing to look at him. Hey. You didn't say anything. Sol realized what he did and let go of your wrist, mumbling a soft sorry under his breath and shoving his hands in his pockets as he bit his lower lip. A slight tint of red invading his ears, but still determined to talk to you. We, we should try to finish our assignments when we can, so... I need to have some way to contact you. You turned to look at him and thought about it before pulling out your phone. This is just for the sole purpose of the project. Hey, I'd... I'd like for us to be friends. After what you did back to him in the library? The apparent shock on your face was enough to let him know exactly what you were thinking about and tilted his head to the side. His eyes furrowed and a small smile on his face. Stop thinking about what happened in the library. I forgive you. In fact, I wouldn't forgive myself uh, if you were in the same position. What was that? I would like for us to be friends, Sparrow. You just said that. But why? His eyes ever so soft softened. Why not? A soft smile on his face, trying to calm you down, telling you that everything is alright. The tightness in your chest slowly faded away the more you look at him, reassuring you that you did nothing wrong. You're a good guy, Sol. How about we hang out again tomorrow? Okay, so then it folds into this. I like this! Oh, I'm liking Sol more and more! Goodness! Oh no, I left the thingy on. I'm sorry. Oh no. That was probably annoying. I'm sorry that thing was there, guys. I got carried away by soul. <laughs> I like him. Okay, and then let's get this. Okay, so it's the same thing here. Oh, we didn't. Okay, I don't think we texted him that time. Okay, we are going to uh, stop them. I've got to stop them. You rushed out as quickly as you can across uh, to where the bullies are. Stop! From the sound of your voice, the bullies halt in their movement and turn to face where you are. 
Yeah, dude, freaking stop. You aren't touching this boy. Oh. Hey. You look at him clearly knocked down on the floor, a few books on his side. He looking nice. Oh, I'm loving these cutscenes. They look so freaking good. Your eyes meet with a, sud a piercing reddish one. His eyes narrow as you turn to your sudden appearance. If you hurt him, I'll scream and alert everyone in the library. By your threat, the bullies click their tongue before roughly kicking the guy on the floor and leaving. The raven-haired one shoving your shoulder on their way. You rub the area where the bully shoved you before turning your attention back to the student on the floor. He looks pretty beaten up. Purple bruise forming on his left cheek. You went towards him and knelt down, offering your hand. You said nothing, however. Looked at your outreached hand, hesitating for a while before gripping your wrist and helping him stand up. But he didn't get hurt his hand! We stopped him from getting his hand cut! Yes! Now that he's standing at his full height, he's actually pretty tall. Probably around six foot. Dang. His red eyes then going back and forth around the area, back to you, and on a random corner. Ah, we should probably get you to the nurse's off. I'm fine. No need. And with that, he left as quickly as he can. You trailed after him, seeing him picking up his things from what seemed to be your usual spot before exiting the library. Well, at least my usual spot is open now, but I wonder if they're actually feeling alright. From the corner of your eye, you notice something, or rather, someone. It's the guy from the library! He's in the same class as me? Why haven't I noticed him before? When his eyes meet yours, they widen a bit before turning away, his focus now on the book in his hand, a slight red tint on his pale cheeks. Oh, he remembers us, too. Maybe this is my chance to get to know him. Hehehehe. <laughs> Okay, this looks the same. How about you? Maybe you should do my portrait first. Well, if you insist. Soul said, relaxing in his seat and taking his. <laughs> so we sit back and like adjust her hair and everything. Soul notices this and you swear you saw the edges of his lips twitch upward. <laughs> oh, it's animated! <laughs> Look at him! Oh, he's adorable! Oh. Okay, I could just sit here and chill at this. This is awesome. The sound of your pencil against the paper filled the classroom. You and your, uh, you on your seat as Soul looks up at you and back on the paper from time to time. He's adorable. I just want a gift of this, okay? Just, this is adorable. Whenever he gazes at you, you swore his eyes go half-lidded as in a dreamy haze. But you didn't think much about it. Oh, he's smiling. Thank you. What was that? Oh, he's cute. <laughs> Soul stopped his strokes on the paper and finally locked gaze with you. His sketch pad covers half of his face as he speaks. Thank you, Sparrow, for helping me back in the library. Oh, it's not a problem. You were in quite a pickle and no one bothered to help you out. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't save you there. Well, you've saved me the trouble today. After that, Sol said nothing as he looks at you before continuing on. You swear a small tint of pink appeared on his ears as he kept hiding half of his face behind the sketch pad. Yeah, he's blushing. Oh, look. He's got uh, piercings at the top of his ears, too. That's... Ah. Guys, guys, I love this boy. 
small conversations were made then and there as he, here and there as he worked as he kept the air afloat. Sorry I wasn't able to make it in time to not get you injured. You start started and Sol's eyes just widened at you before shaking his head. Don't worry about it. These type of things are usual for me. Is us usual for you? He sighed, as if the thought alone of such a huge task on his hands while he continued on. I'd get in trouble either way, so what's the point? Sol then mumbled, mumbled something under his breath, the grip on the pencil tightening in his grip before sighing and looking up at you. And that was enough to calm him down and continued on with the sketch, leaving you dumbfounded. Before you knew it, class was over. Sol, however, is not done with the portraits of you as his pencil still makes a few more final touches on the sketch pad. Just a few more touches. There. Can I see? Of course. Sol hands his sketches to you and you gasp. This looks so good! The details and everything! And he's not even done? Sol, this looks amazing! How the fuck did you do this? By your compliment. Oh, you're so red. By your compliment, he just rubbed the back of his neck and shrugged a little, a bit embarrassed at your compliment. I love to sketch once in a while. I'd often draw random people in parks when I go out. You couldn't help but admire him with his work. Can I keep this? I mean, right after a professor grades it, of course. So I'll place the hand under his chin, thinking about it. Hmm. Not sure. I think I could do better than that one. But I really like this one. He just chuckled. Alright, you can have it once I'm done and our professor grades it. But in return, I get to keep the portrait you make of me, alright? I think that's a fair deal. Sol agreed and you cheered. You gave him back his sketch pad and fixed up your things. Sol packed it up as well. And you both headed out towards the hallway. Okay, and this is the same as our first time. Oh, I love this. Oh, these are so cute. Do we text him? Curl seems happy about it. You giggled. This also reminds you of something. Oh, it's talking about soul. Okay, there we go. Okay, yay. I keep stopping before we actually get to the end because uh, there's a not safe for work scene back there. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, uh, that means we only have... Wait, no! What did I do? Okay. Is it this one? Okay, we did these. Ask them to move away from your seat. That's your seat, and no one else is going to take it away from you and your comfort. You puffed out your chest and went towards a person where your rightful spot should be. He was reading a book, way too focused on it, didn't notice your presence for a short while. You faked a cough. This seems to catch his attention. Um, you're in my seat, can I have it back? He looks up from the book he's reading, and you're met with piercing reddish eyes. Eye bags right under it as if he's never gotten a wink of sleep for a week. You twiddled your thumbs, your heart thumping for, from your chest as you returned his gaze, ending in some sort of stare down. He raised a brow before looking around, under the table, on the seat, heck, even under the book before turning back to you. I don't see your name anywhere. <laughs> it's a classic! And he delivered it straight-faced. Perfect. The vein tightened. Oh, so he's trying to be a smart ass, huh? Your cheeks puffed and he just gave a small chuckle before closing his book and placed it down on the table. I'll give your seat back, but what can you offer in exchange? Um. Oh. Every time I think we're almost done, <laughs> we're not. Coffee? Just give me my seat. Something intimate. Oh, coffee. Coffee. How about coffee? You look like you need one at the moment. 
He chuckled. All right, coffee it is then. Then he went back to reading his book and waving you off, waiting for his coffee. <laughs> you sighed as you went to the library's cafe counter. Next in line, please. However, as you faced the cashier before you, you cursed under your breath. I forgot to ask what kind of coffee he likes. Fuck it, whatever, I guess. Facing the cashier again, you decide on... Oh my god, there's so many choices. Uh, mocha latte black. Well, he probably needs to wake up more, but... Uh, let, let's, let's take him in black. Black, please. Going for something strong today. I won't judge. I like black, too. Especially to keep me awake. More like it's just a random guess. You gave the cashier the money while the barista behind her prepares your drink. Once your order was up, you grabbed the drink of your choice, thanking the barista, and went back to the seat where the guy was, careful not to accidentally spill the contents of the drink and avoid passing students. There, you can still see him reading the book before he looked up once he smelled the sweet aroma of coffee beans coming his way. Once you were beside him, you carefully placed down the cup uh, next to him. He took it and held it to his face. He took small sips from it, not saying anything, his eyes still glued to his book. So, no comment, huh? Well, uh, there's your coffee. Um, so are you moving aside or no? He looked up, thinking hard on your words. Alright, but I'm kind of liking the spot too. You just have to deal with me sitting beside you. You nodded and he moved to the seat next to your now reserved spot. You took your seat, a, pl a smile on your face from your mini victory. He just rolled his eyes playfully before continuing on his book. You set yourself down and started with your report for your literature class. Hey! So we did good! Satisfied, you start to pack up your things while doing so your seatmate starts packing up his things as well. Noticing his cup of coffee now empty, he then got out of his seat and walked away, not minding your presence as he exited. You hesitated for a short moment before calling out for him before he could reach the library doors. Hey! He stopped in his tracks and turned around to look at you. A brow raised. What's your next class? Clearly not expecting you to ask, much less talk to him again. He paused before replying. Art class. Wait, for real? With Mr. Spring? He nodded. How come I've ne I never seen this guy throughout the semester? Sensing your confusion, he just scratched the back of his head. I don't really care if you've never seen me before. Barely go in class or make myself known either way. He sighed, irritation at the back of his throat at the idea. He probably got a warning to attend the class where he drops. You shook your head. But still, would you like to go to next class with me that- Huh? Where did he go? Guess he went ahead. You shrugged, heading out the library onto your next class, expecting the green-haired male to be there. Okay, um, he didn't get in a fight though because he was with, with us. Does he not have his bandage then? You see him, the guy from the library. He seems to be preoccupied with the same red book he's been reading at the back of the library. But on his hand now is a pencil he seems to be scribbling on. He doesn't have a wound! Look at him! Look at the baby! He's not been stabbed or punched! Oh, yay! That's gotta be the best route, right? You went to your seat by the window, minding your own business. At least he wasn't lying about him being in the same class as me. looking the same I love to see some of your works then would you like to draw my portrait first sure wait let me get my things you took out your sketch pad and a charcoal pencil of silver lax was on his seat would you like me to pose, or... Hmm. 
maybe do a three-fourths angle pose? Alright. Oh! Hey, bud! Perfect. Chef's kiss. Look how pretty he is! He's not hurt! We did it! We did it! Your eyes scanned his face. The more you look at him, the more you notice some of his features. His cheekbones, his lips with two piercings, his thick eyebrows, the way his hair settles down on his shoulders, and the reddish-orange eyes. He's actually quite handsome. For a moment, you just stare at his eyes. He noticed and stared back, his pupils dilating before he realized he was staring. <laughs> well, they say uh, your eyes dilate when, uh, when you see something you like. <laughs> Heat rises to his cheeks. He quickly averted his head away. Hey, eyes on me. Sorry, I'm, I'm not used to being stared at for that long. Relax, it's just me. Plus, you'll stare at my boring face after I'm done with your portrait. Your face isn't boring. I actually think you look beautiful. Yay, that's so cute. <laughs> oh, this, this game just keeps getting better. He says without even thinking twice, his eyes met yours, half-lidded and his pupils were wide. Now it's your turn to turn red. You hid your face behind your sketch pad and whacking him with your charcoal pencil. Stop saying stupid... <laughs> Stop saying stupid things and st stay still. <laughs> Saul just chuckled and stilled his movements. A hand on his chest and a smile on his face. You weren't done with your sketch, however. The conversation kept repeating in your mind and made it hard for you to concentrate. And like hell you were gonna show it to Saul. Come on, just a peek. It's not done yet! Boo. <laughs> you chucked the sketch pad in your bag before a soul could grab a hold of it. <laughs> okay, and then we're exchanging numbers. Okay, and that's gonna hang out. Okay, so I think everything else is gonna be the same here. Okay! Yes, this is cool. I like this. I like this. <laughs> Load. Hey, look. Is it any different? We bring him a different drink. He took a small sip from the cup before humming in approval, taking a few more sips from it. So he likes the mocha. Seems to like it. Well, let's. Okay, so I think that might be the only difference. It looks like. Okay, that might be the only difference. It's because we got him mocha. <laughs> but he likes the mocha. Okay. I'm just doing a quick check here. It looks all the same. Okay. Alright. Um. What about. Latte. He took a deep inhale before sipping from the cup. A smile formed on his face, his eyes having a slight sparkle in them before closing his eyes and taking another sip. He's a latte boy! That seems to be his favorite. Nice guess, Sparrow. Well, there's your coffee. <laughs> okay, ah! Uh, <laughs> I like that! He, he got so happy! He got, like, sparkly eyes! He got, like, sparkly eyes over the latte! <laughs> Okay, this all looks the same. Okay, if I am skipping anything small, I'm sorry. I'm trying here. This is turning into a very long video. 
<laughs> we got the close up again. Hey, um, now we can do the just give me my seat and something intimate. I have no time for your games. Just leave and leave me and let me have my seat that you stole. However, he just stared at you. A second passed, returning his attention back to the book. If you really want to sit here, then make me. Either way, I'm already comfortable here, so no, I'm not leaving. This guy's getting on your nerves. Okay, if he doesn't want to leave, so be it. Did we just sit in his lap? <laughs> Without thinking, you moved to him before plopping yourself down on his lap. This clearly caught him by surprise, for he let out a sharp gasp, his eyes wide, gripping the book he nearly threw away. <laughs> you looked behind him with a cocky smirk before setting down your things on the table and went on to do your literature report. He hadn't said anything for a full minute, his body stiff. Is it completely stiff everywhere? <laughs> Did he stop breathing too? <laughs> You killed him. We killed him. We killed him. <laughs> Relax, will you? You're making it uncomfortable for me and it's hard to concentrate. His breath he was holding was finally let out. He grumbled under his breath and placed his arms beside yours as he watches you go on with your work. Edgar Allan Poe? Yeah, what about it? What a coincidence. My report is about him too, but not on a dream within a dream. What made you choose this poem after everything else he's written? That was a genuine question from him, eyeing you with curiosity. I just think it's interesting. The way he writes is unlike any other writer out there. Plus, I think this poem talks about being uncertain about something. Like, about life or about someone's feelings. You trail off. The ache in your heart suddenly burns within your body. He seemed to notice your change in demeanor before opening his mouth. I think it's a good topic to make a report on. Your eyes met him, a smile on his face. A chuckle left your lips at his response. Thanks. I'll do my best on it. <laughs> We're just going to continue working on his lap. <laughs> he realized he was staring for quite a while before looking away, a small red tint invading his cheeks, avoiding your gaze. You smiled and went on with your report on his lap him finally relaxing underneath you. How about you? What's a poem you picked from the great Mr. Poe himself? The guy looked up as if thinking before turning to look at you. Have you read Annabelle Lee? If my memory serves me right, is that the poem about their love for his, this woman named Annabelle Lee, right? That poem's not gonna lie has a lot of deep meaning and symbolism to it. Anyone can have multiple interpretations of it. But the main concept, at least in my opinion, is that the speaker loves Annabelle Lee to the point of death and even after death. Yeah, pretty much. And honestly, I think it's beautiful. Love? Death. His body laxed. Mind somewhere else, but a small smile on, and the light in his eyes are apparent before his smile turns into a frown. But people refuse to let them be together. As if fate refuses them to die together. What was that? What? Oh, don't mind me. What did you say? But, yeah, that's my report. Uh, sorry, I kind of start rambling on. No, I don't mind. <laughs> As we say, perched in your lap. Thanks for sharing. I honestly think it's quite interesting. Also, I didn't think you'd be the type of person to be into romance. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. As we say, perched in his lap. <laughs> I, I think you're forcing him to think about romance uh, and some related activities. <laughs> you packed up your things and stood up from your seat, almost forgetting you made someone into a cushion. <laughs> hey, uh, sorry for sitting on you like that. That was kind of rude of me. No, it's alright. <laughs> Look at him blush. What was that? Nothing. <laughs> I didn't catch it. Your next class is art, right? How did you know? It's my next subject. Who knows? Maybe we're classmates or just have different teachers. 
He lets out a sigh, seemingly disappointed at the realization. He packed up his things and before heading towards the exit. You follow him on the way out. Just then you heard someone calling out your name. You faced to your left and saw no one other than Crow, Brittany, and the rest of her group of friends. Did they get in a food fight? I see that you did spend your time in the library. I did. How was lunch? Brittany's eyes narrowed, and you didn't understand why, but the moment your eyes went to her ruined uniform, you kind of guessed what happened. That has got to be one of the best food fights I've ever been in. The jock behind her exclaimed. He seemed to be unstained save for a few spaghetti sauce on his gel jersey, but that didn't seem to bother him. Dirly, you better shut your, shut your fucking mouth before I do the honors for you. Oh, she tiny. Uh, 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 now, Brittany, let's just go to the changing room and ask for the principal some extra uniforms, okay? The girl with the glasses cut off Brittany, calming her down in the process. You're right. Let's go, Jess. I can't believe I have to be late to my next class because of this bullshit. Who did you piss off, Brittany? Oh, hello. Daryl said nothing but hid it behind the tall, stoic male as both Jess and Brittany left. Sometimes I forget how scary she is. Don't you agree, Geo? Oh, Geo's cute. Get off me. Sometimes you wonder how the group are even friends, but then again, people don't usually approach your friend group. You often wonder. But then again, it's none of your business to pry. Ignore them. So back to you, Sparrow. Oh, right. I actually had to fight someone for my favorite spot in the library. Talk about a pain in the ass. <laughs> it depends about the pain in the ass. Where, what part were you sitting on? Oh. Crow just chuckled, his eyes telling you to go on. He shouldn't have gotten too far. He just slipped. You turned around, expecting the green hair streaked male to be there, but to your surprise, he was already gone. He's fast. How curious. Do you happen to know who they are? No. <laughs> we just sat on his lap for like an hour, but we don't have his name. I never got to ask what what his name. Well, you better go off to your next class. We only have a few minutes left before the bell rings. I'll see you soon, Sparrow. You wave him goodbye, Crow going forward with Daryl and Geo behind. You scratch your head before heading towards the other direction and into your next class as the bell rings, echoing through the hallway. There. Judging from his look, he's been staring at you for a while. You give him a small smile and a wave. He smiles back with a small wave of his own. You went to your seat by the window, turning around to face him one more time. His eyes still fixated on you, a hand on his cheek while admiring you. He raised up your cheek from the somewhat dreamy look on his face. <laughs> you turn your head back to the front, focusing on whatever your professor is talking about. He sits at the back. No wonder I quite don't notice him. <laughs> okay, and then this is the same thing, but oh gosh. Oh, that was good. That was such a good interaction, man. It's gonna be a bit different this time, like with drawing. Okay, and we get the three force pose again. Okay, this looks the same. Oh, that was good. I can't. I was not expecting us to turn him into our seat. Okay, <laughs> we're so bold. I love it. I love it. Let's see. What was the last one? Uh, was it this one? No, we did that one. Um.
for this one. Yeah, there we go. Coffee, just give me my feet. Something intimate. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, let's do it. What? You want a hug or something? He raised a brow at you. A slight tilt to his head, wondering what you were trying to imply. Now that I have a good look at him, he actually looks kind of cute. No, now wait, what am I saying? Shaking your head, ignoring your cheeks heating up, you pat at your temples, trying to get rid of the thought. Minding you no more, the guy returned his attention to the book. A groan escaped your mouth. With a pout, you set your things down and sat on the chair next to him. It was quiet, and your attention was just solely focused on the work before you, while the ear guy beside you continued on with his book. The sound of him flipping... Okay, so... Alright, so nothing happened. <laughs> I was actually expecting more from that part. Alright, so we did all of that one. Uh, we did that one. I think... Actually, I think maybe the only option we have left is going to be going with them to the cafeteria. Brittany hummed a sound of content before turning her heels and heading towards the classroom's exit. In tow with her is four other people, one being Crow. Crow looks back at you by the door, waiting for you. You caught up with them and met eyes with Crow again. There's something in his gaze that sends a shiver down your spine. Oh, is Crow our other love interest? I think you get two love interests in this game. Or that's the idea. I can see Crow being our other love interest. You quickly avert uh, your eyes once you got out of Crow, uh, go out with Crow, falling behind you, and the group headed towards the ca school's cafeteria. The cafeteria was loud, students lining up to grab today's school lunch while the rest went to a table with their packed lunches. So, Sparrow, do you want to come with us to get the school's food for the day, or do you want to grab a table with the others? Brittany said, her gaze fixed on you. Brittany, along with Crow and a girl with an orange uniform, seemed to be grabbing school lunches. Meanwhile, the two guys with them have their own packed lunch, about to head off to find a seat with the group. You decided that you... Which one is it? We are going to have packed lunch. I packed my own lunch. Brittany just shrugged. Alright then, let's go, Jess. She went to line up with the rest of the students, the girl with the glasses following behind her. You really need to recall who the friends you hang out with are again. The girl with the glasses, as you recall when Brittany mentioned her name, was Jess. She's a big nerd and has a fondness for this idol named... What's his name? Eros? Aries? Whatever. You honestly don't care. She's really quiet and attached to the hip towards Brittany. Like a dog. She's pathetic. I'll go line up as well. Will you be fine with those two? Crow asked you with concern laced in his tone. Oh no. Should we be worried? You face the other two boys. One clearly taking the other talking the other Mel, Mel's ear off while the other doesn't really give a damn, seeming to look around the cafeteria as if searching for something. You nod your head to Crow and he gave you a pat on the head, a blush making its way to your cheeks before you went along with Brittany and Jess. Then you head off to where the two guys are, them already seated at a table while bringing out their own lunch. Your food always looks so good, Geo. I bet they taste as great. No. <laughs> the guy named Geo said as he slapped the jock's hand away from the bento box like, no, you're not getting my food, dang it. The jock pouted, rubbing his hand before taking out his own patch, packed lunch. As you sat down across from the two boys, Geo kept his eyes on you for quite a while, not breaking his gaze as he chews on his lunch. A shiver went down your spine. The jock beside him somehow just remembered your presence on your table and returned his head towards you. Oh right, Sparrow right? What did you bring for lunch? Dude, you're not getting our food either. I mean, if you don't mind sharing, that is. Dude! Both on what it is and if you don't- Oh, if you mind sharing it to me, hee <laughs> hee. 
I like this guy beside you. Jill only rolled his eyes when the jock nudged his shoulder, letting out an irritated groan. Don't bother with Daryl. He'll take your food either way, even if you did give him some. Hey, now. You ain't getting our lunch, bud. It's our lunch. The only one uh, that's allowed to have our lunch is uh, Soul and maybe Crow. While the two bicker on, you just give a small chuckle and ate your packed lunch. In the corner of your eyes, you notice Brittany, Jess, and Crow with their lunch trays in hand, heading towards where the three of you are seated. Move your ass aside, Daryl. A loud gasp escaped through Brittany's lips. Her mouth open in shock with the food that was on her tray, now splattered across her white uniform. Brittany! Oops, sorry about that. You should have watched where you were going there. Oh, so there is a mean girl beside Brittany. Okay, got it. Brittany's eyes met with the person responsible. A group of girls, definitely bullies, and judging from Brittany's face filled with rage, they did they seem to know each other. Britt, are you alright? You should get yourself clean You fucking bitch. This is my only clean uniform. How fucking dare you? Oh, look at Miss Claire all fly flared up. Careful there, sweetie. You'll get wrinkles. It's not like you're all ugly already. And by ugly, this is getting ugly quite fast. Everyone's gaze were on the group of girls, some taking out their phones, either taking pictures or start recording. Crow co tried to come in between them to stop the fight, but he wasn't fast enough. Splat. Next thing we knew, another loud gasp was heard. A wide smile was on Brittany's face. Food on the mean girl's white uniform as well. Jess's face filled with shock as the food from her tray is gone. <laughs> Take that shit stain. How dare you? Oh my god. <laughs> food fight! Next thing everyone knows, the cafeteria is filled with rowdy students and food flying across the area. <laughs> Are those trays? <laughs> oh, that sound is like ping! <laughs> A sudden wave of pain was felt on your head, your whole face. And the last thing you saw was Crow calling out your name before passing out. <laughs> we got knocked out with a flying tray. Ugh. Where am I? Oh, you're awake. Thank goodness. Crow? You tried to sit up, but the sudden pain that went through your head stopped you. Crow gently pushed you back down on what seems to be a bed before taking a seat beside it. The nurse already bandaged your head. Don't push yourself. Ugh, what happened? Well, after Daryl started that mess of a food fight, the principal was called in to stop it. Daryl got lucky enough to escape when he did. Gio was nowhere to be seen. As for Brittany, what about her? Well, Jess helped her out to grab a new uniform from the principal's office. Then why does my head hurt so much? Someone threw a tray and you were unfortunate enough to get hit by it. <laughs> Thankfully, I got you out of there before it got ugly. Thanks, Crow. I owe you one. Don't mention it. Anyway, it's a quarter near one in the afternoon. I should probably head out for my next class. You should stay here until the nurse gets back. You'll be alright alone here, right? Oh, I wonder, is Soul gonna show up? Because Soul was injured in going to the nurse, so are we gonna see Soul in here? Yes, you can go on ahead. You sure? Yeah, I'll be fine, Kroll. You've done enough for me today. You gave him a small smile, but he did not return it. Kroll then squeezed your hand, quite hesitant of letting you go before letting go. You miss it as soon as he lets go. He stood up from his seat, but not before giving you a smile and left the infirmary. Ow. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm drifting a little, aren't I? <laughs> okay. cat I can't see you groaned and lied back down on the bed feeling the bandage on your head head I can't see kitty please move hey hey you move 
Thank you. At least the pain is slowly dying a bit. Hopeful it didn't leave a mark on my head. Just then you heard the door open. The nurse's voice drawing through the room as the clicking of her heels got louder as she draws closer. Yep, there he is. Oh, he I don't see the bruise on his face, though. The school nurse entered, and following her was a tall student dressed in black. He seemed to be holding onto his left hand, and there you can clearly see a streak of red flowing. You should be thankful you didn't cut a vein. How were they able to get past with a pocket knife in the first place? The nurse sighed, seeming like she got her hands full with another student. The latter, however, didn't say anything but lets out a small hiss when the nurse stabbed antibacterial on his wound. He sat up slowly, careful not to hit your head on anything else, before sitting up and looking at the student and the nurse. Your eyes met with a reddish-orange one as the nurse finishes up wrapping around the wound, a blotch of red slowly seeping out and staining the once-white bandage. His eyes still on you. Oh, you're finally awake, Mr. Fail! The nurse finally notices your presence. She took out some painkillers from one of the cabinets and gave it to you. Take these to lessen the pain. You're both free to go back to your class or you can stay here and recover. I'll go back. Thanks for patching me up, nurse. The boy said before heading out of the infirmary. The nurse just shook her head before returning her attention to you. You can take some extra pills, but not too much. You can come back here if you ever feel anything wrong, Mr. Fail. Take care now. You thank the nurse before heading out the infirmary and onto your next class. Wow. And now everything's just normal, right? It's the guy from the clinic. How come I just noticed his presence just now? Has he always been part of the same art class as me? And judging from his face, the bandage around his left hand doesn't seem to be much of a problem to him. You shook your head and took your seat. Okay, and this looks the same. It seems you're quite curious to know what happened to this, huh? And you weren't slick with it either. You froze when he caught you red-handed, just like the red seeping out of his hand. You stopped drawing. Sorry, that was rude of me. It was fine. This is just usual for me. I've gotten worse injuries than this. You raise a brow at that. Not the worse? If you don't mind me asking, what happened? He paused and averted his eyes, but opens up to speak. Nothing much. Just minding my own business. Got assaulted. <clears throat> had to defend myself. He talked as if it's another normal Monday for him. Your eyes furrowed, he noticed, and just chuckled. No need to worry about me. All that matters is that I'm still here. You didn't say anything, however. Continuing on with the drawing, your mo movement's slow, and now refusing to look at his injured hand. This school is way more fucked up than I thought it would be. not finished yet you need to draw me when your injury gets better Aww. that's nice Aww. goodness <laughs> okay um buy your lunch I think this is the last option we got, right? <laughs> right? I'll buy. All right, then. Daryl, Geo, go find us some seats while we line up. The jock you assumed was named Daryl waved Brittany away and turned around with the other male named Geo to find a seat, his arm wrapped around his shoulder, while Geo was clearly a bit annoyed at the gesture. Come on, Jess. Let's get in line. Y yes, of course. You go first, Britt. 
Let's get in line before more people start piling up. We don't want to get the bad stuff for lunch. You shuddered at the thought, remembering the leftovers from the school cafeteria. You nodded and went with Crow, and getting in line with the rest of the students. In the line, Crow turned his attention back to you. I'm glad you're able to hang around with us, Carol. Even if it's most of the time. Oh! Oh, this is so hard to see. No problem. I actually kind of regret coming. Oh, I apologize for even suggesting. Shit, did you accidentally say that out loud? He saw your slight distress, but his face says not to worry about it. How typical of him. Being nice just for me. You feel bad now. Great. <laughs> Once everyone got their food, Brittany turned her heel and walked towards where Daryl and Gio were sitting. Move your ass aside, Daryl. I'm sitting... Okay. And this is the same. I wonder... Okay. Okay, this looks the same. Okay. Let's go back. And what would happen if we say no problem? No problem, Crow. Maybe I just need to change the scenery, that's all. Crow just chuckled before picking up his food behind the counter, paying for it afterwards as you did the same. You weren't really that hungry and just bought a sandwich and a juice that you regularly buy whenever you find the time to spend your lunch break here. Brittany was already waiting with the rest of you, tray in hand. Once everyone got their food, Brittany turned her heel and walked towards the table. Alright. Did we get knocked out again? Yep. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Settings. Main menu. All right. I think, I think I've covered everything in this day one demo. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, my thoughts of earlier is this is uh still the same as i'm looking forward to playing more of this this was amazing i'm gonna have a link down below so you guys can go and get this demo for yourself uh remember if you if you donate five dollars or more um whenever you get the um or you know you can choose how much you pay but if you do five dollars or more you get the uh, not safe for work version which we already got a nice little scene for this hmm but <laughs> this has been a very long video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And I will see you next time. I am going to go and hopefully not get hit in the head with a tray. Yep, that's my goal for today. Okay. <laughs> Bye.